Alrighty, so now that our minions are spawning into the world, let's get a, a set up their ability to start walking around. So before we dive into that though, the first thing we want to do is in the player blueprint over in the summon trace update function, one thing I forgot is that you want to, after the hit location, before you set the actor's location of the summon target, you want to drag off an is valid node and hook that up in between. Because if it's not valid, then you don't want it trying to update a location of something that doesn't exist. So we'll just leave the is not valid, let it fizzle itself out. But you want that in between so that if you were getting any errors, that should solve it. So Yeah. Alright, but with that done, what we want to do now is in the content browser, right click, go to animation. I want to set up a blend space for the goblin character. I'm going to call it locomotion underscore bs, double click to open it up, and then I'm going to drag out the breathing idle to the very beginning, the walking to the first one, and then the run to that one. Over on the axis settings, for the name, I'm going to set it to speed, and for the axis value, maximum axis value, I'm going to do... I don't want him to be too quick, but I don't want him to be too slow. I don't want him to be as fast as the player. So I'm thinking about 325 would be good. So with that done, we don't need to worry about adding a buffer for the animations to make sure they're placed. Since the minion will be moving at pretty set rates, it'll be it'll work right. So inside the minion BP, negative. Out back in the content browser, we want to right click, go to animation one more time, animation blueprint. The blueprint will be for our goblin, so we'll click him and call this minion anim underscore bp. And then suddenly I'm paranoid that this isn't recording, but it is. Paranoia. Alright, double click open that up. We're going to right click in the graph here and add a state machine. Hook that to the output pose. Double click to open that up. Drag off the entry and add a state called init, which is what I use as short for initialization. Drag out the locomotion and hook that up. And then in the event graph, off the update animation, we're going to add a sequence node with S left click. Off then zero, we'll cast to the minion. Hook that up to the try get pawn owner. And just like the player's blueprint. We're going to promote that to a variable called minion ref. Then we'll, oop, we'll drag off and get velocity. We don't need to worry about calculating its direction or anything, so we'll just focus on the velocity. Get the length of the vector, vector length. And then promote that to a variable called speed. And then we wait for Sandra Bullock to show up. <laughs> if only it was that easy, right? All right. So then we'll hook the speed to that. Oh, I do have bad jokes. All right. <laughs> so we'll hook the speed to the locomotion. So then we'll go into the minion blueprint, go to the mesh. Under the anim class for the animation, the blueprint we want to use is the one we just set up, the minion anim BP. So that now he yeah, is breathing. So we'll save real quick. So now when you summon him in, look at him, he's a breathing boy, doing all that breathing stuff. Oh, one thing you'll want to do, for the capsule component, what I did is I went down and I set its collision presets to custom in this drop down right at the very top, and I've set the collision response to the camera channel to ignore. Under the mesh, I've done the same thing, so I've gone down, I've set it to custom, uh, I've gone to camera, set it to ignore, but visibility I've set on the mesh to block. So I'll compile that. This is my second time recording. The first time the editor crashed on me, so I had to restart it. That was the only thing left over from the first one I did that I forgot to reset back. So just make sure you do that, and then you're exactly where I'm at. So in the event graph, I want to get rid of that. Off the begin play, we want to cast to player BP. 
off the object we'll get the character get player character promote that to a variable called player ref and then we want to set up a custom event called behave behavior unit this will be basically the brain of the thing that tells the minion if it's following the character follow the character if it's attacking somebody go to the character and attack etc so we'll drag off here and call that behavior unit right off spawn so down here we want to drag it down we'll set up a new variable called behave oh, behavior mode I'll set that to a string compile real quick then we want to do a switch on string the string being our behavior mode which the behavior mode default we want it to be set to follow so we'll highlight the switch on string and we'll add a few pins the first one being follow oh follow And the second one being attacking. And then we'll remove that default pin. So for the behavior mode, when they're following, they went we want them to follow the player. So we'll drag out the player reference, right click in the graph, say AI move to. The target actor is the player reference. The pawn is a reference to self because we want this blueprint to be follow it, moving to this blueprint. We'll set the acceptance radiance to about 100. Looks pretty good usually, I think. And we'll drag this over a little bit. On success, we want to do a branch. We'll drag off this. Uh, make sure you untick that, then we'll drag off, promote that to a variable called dead question mark. Compile just to make sure, yeah, it's okay. And then false, we'll do a re-triggerable delay. For the duration, I'm going to drag off and do a random, no, actually for this one, I think we'll just do point 0.1. When we set up the attack later on, we'll do a, a random amount of time for it to wait. On success, we want to check and see if they're dead. On fail, we also want to check that. And then we'll just call the behavior unit again. If they are not dead. If they're, if they're dead, then we don't want them to do anything because dead people don't do much. Usually, I mean, there's not often. All right, so the behavior unit will make sure that they're moving to the player on follow. Check to make sure that the player the character is not dead. And if it's not, then they go to the new unit. All right, well, let's check it out. First thing you're going to need to do in order to get them walking around is go into volumes and then a nav mesh bounds volume. So we'll drag that out into the world. Go to the X, scale it up. Maybe not that much. We'll zoom up. Yeah, it's a bit much. Maybe 5,000. 3,000. It doesn't really matter. 3,500, just to make sure it's encompassed. 3,500. And then 1,000 on the Z. If you need to check to see where all your characters will be able to walk, just hit P on the keyboard with the nav mesh selected and anywhere the green touches is their kingdom I'm gonna turn that off because it's distracting and then under the minion blueprint one more thing we want to do is we want to go into character movement I'm gonna set their walking down to 325 so now He ain't doing nothing. All right, under minion, character movement, 
scroll all the way down to the bottom. Where is that AI node? Maybe it's not there. Maybe it's under this one. Check, click the self. Auto possess AI. Ah, under pawn, go to auto possess AI, and you want it placed in world or spawned. Otherwise, the AI basically got no brain. So yeah, there he goes. Now he's following. He a little close. He a little close. So let's try 200. Yeah, there he be. Hey, there's my little guy. Now they'll follow me around. Until they can't reach me. And then they'll just basically stand still. And then when I come back, they come back. So yeah, now they're following around. Hmm. One thing we want to do is see how they're bunching up. Back in the minion. Under one of these. I think it's the character movement type in the details panel. R V O. So that'll uh make it to where they register these capsules and they'll try to avoid those of other characters also instead of stacking up on top of each other. So now if we summon them in and we run away. They don't bunch up as much. We'll cause a few weird issues sometimes, but you know, it's better than them stacking right on top of each other and blending in together. So, yeah, there they go. Alright, your little buddies are following you. One thing we can do is, under the character movement, we can also set their acceleration down to where they don't just immediately go into it. And then breaking friction factor, I'm going to set to 0.75. Ground friction, I'm going to leave. Breaking deceleration when walking, zero. All right, so I've affected the max acceleration. I've reduced it. I've reduced the breaking friction factor. And then the breaking deceleration, as well as the max walk speed, is down to 325. So now, my little buddies. And they got a little bit smoother animation to them. And they'll follow you as anywhere that stuff re that nav mesh goes. So, all right. In the next one, we'll start setting up how to command them to a location. So we'll bring back this. Uh, oh, I can't use it. So we'll bring back this thing, and we'll be able to pick a point, click, and then they'll just run directly to it. So, catch you in the next one.